Hello, this is Adam Rayner for Slingshot World TV at the Bushcraft Show 2018. And oh my gosh, there are some interesting exhibitors here. I'm at the, well, the website Prehistoric Bronze KUK. It's a gentleman called Simon, whose uh, personal uh, moniker online finishes Bow Bar because, well, there's two big names and a hyphenated and it's a lot easier digitally, you said. So, Simon, um, would you describe yourself as a paleo artisan? What, what, what is it you guys do? Because you're really reproducing Bronze Age technology. It's uh, a combination of things really because we want to make it accessible to the public so yeah. we'll use some modern systems to represent and demonstrate the principles of what we're being used in the Bronze Age. Wow. But we also do a lot of living history um, so we are trying to replicate and rediscover the um, techniques and methods and materials that were used by our ancestors back in the Bronze Age. Because uh, I come from a mad world of catapults but if somebody were to, um, well, it's not Bronze Age, but I'm sure you could fashion it. The thing is, though, we love the whole sort of bushcraft thing and the manufacturing of beautiful stuff by hand. And, uh, well, fancy injection molders is one thing, but fourth generation in, in not injection molding, but casting of aluminium and of uh, brass and of bronze. I have a pocket poacher mega grip cast in bronze. And I have to say, the detail and beauty what you've created there is every bit as awesome. Thank you. Just come off focus there, there we go. But anything that these guys have made, let me just, if I step around here, um, flip me screen around and grab hold of that dip I can show it in really super close 4K. So the part that you guys are involved in specifically is this blade. Yeah, uh, it's modelled on one that was found just outside Bradford and it's an uh, early Bronze Age flat axe, so the original would be the, ooh, about 4,000 years old. Um, they cast in a stone mould flat and then uh, cold worked into the final shape with all the decorations put on by hand afterwards. Wow. That was, so, uh, again, all, all cold work. Explaining the marvellousness of 4K resolution and Simon was saying, oh, it'll show all the flaws floors my yes the charm of handmade I was saying but the point is that is absolutely exquisite and uh, you can see the reflection of an ugly fat bloke <laughs> and my ridiculous the, the handles are very much experimental because the wood very rarely survives so we, yes we just the best guess um, sometimes they work sometimes they don't and that's part of the journey I was talking to you earlier so let's get your face back in shot there and you're explaining that when you actually supply one of your bronze axe heads making the uh, haft was definitely something that was for the person who bought it to do this isn't just I'm buying a thing it's no uh, I'm this participating little, this little one it's again it's an early Bronze Age one how were they hafted we don't know but if you look at the, that shape they're found that way if you look at that yeah. shape it's so versatile you can use it as an adze as an axe as a hide scraper a scroll knife a chisel a push knife it could be many things it's so yeah, you are looking at your early Bronze Age multi-tool, if you like. Perhaps even the ghost fire say a leatherman. <laughs> <laughs> actually, the really, really sad thing is that I've actually got a leatherman as well on my hip. <laughs> <laughs> that was laughing at, not with, wasn't it? I heard no, absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. So, you sad man. Fabulous. <laughs> There's also, I spotted down there, a little bit of an homage to, well, every now and again you hear of some detectorist who can't believe his luck, because, well, are those not representations of things that have been found in solid sort of Bronze Age gold? Um, this, yes, um, but uh, I can't get it on, an arm ring, a spiral arm ring, and that is the type of thing they were producing in gold. Uh, a couple yeah. have been found, bended up in fields. Yeah, uh, votive offerings quite often ritually killed and then uh, placed into uh, a watery liminal zone. And that's why they got preserved. And that's a torque. T-O-R-C. T-O-R-C, yes. Not T-O-R-Q-U-E. That's a no. flaming engines. <laughs> I just had a row with somebody on Facebook and they were so convinced they were yeah. correct and it was like... Yeah, these, I'm so glad, yes. They, they have their origins in, in the later Bronze Age, but they're more known in the Iron Age. Again, they'd be solid gold. Wow. And the weight of some of them, the, in the, uh, if you look at things like the Snetterschen board, yes. um, they, they reckon it's about 80 hours just to draw the wire. 
before you start considering the twisting and the forging. That one's based on one from the Ashmolean Museum, it's a, a, from a the Iron Age, Bronze Age transitional period. Simon, so just a wealth of interesting, yeah. fascinating stuff. This one is uh, what's called a Picardy pin. Uh, yeah, your clothes are held together. So would that be whether it was a hide or um, a great piece of fabric, or we don't really know? They had exquisite fabrics in the Bronze Age. People uh, quite often think they're in coarse woven wools yes. and, and hide. Must Farm in Cambridgeshire has um, really opened the world's eyes. They've found a piece of fabric there made from um, linen, yes. so it's processed flax. Yes. 26 strands per centimetre. <laughs> so John Lewis, we only sell the <laughs> finest flax and linen. But the idea with awesome. these is, as you quite rightly say, is a, as a clothespin. No buttons, that would have been the item yeah. and a major possession, yeah. uh, your whole wrapped up, whatever it would oh, have been. But then again, could be a hairpin. Not yes. <laughs> yes, the sun's come out on your head there, so I mean, it's a <laughs> lovely day here at the Bushcraft Show, and this has just been one of the most fascinating things from our point of view, because, yep, it's catapults, but we love, we're fascinated by things people make, and the maker's mark is going to be a little piece of Slingshot World magazine, so, wow, if you ever think of making anything a little bit post-dating the first vulcanisation of rubber, Simon, do let us know. <laughs> It's a few thousand years after your era, really, isn't it, dude? Well, 18, yes. something, whatever. As it was. long as I can make a furnace out of muck and mud, I'll be fine. There's nothing to add to that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.